Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. First things first, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, I would really appreciate it and whilst you're there, let me know how you are feeling out of 10 in the comment section down below. For me this week, I think I've been about a seven. We've had a really good week and got loads of stuff done, but as you might be able to tell from my voice, I've been really ill. Um, I've been tested negative for COVID, but I have to, whatever this is, it is dire. It is killing me off. Um, low of the week probably is this illness. It just it is just horrible, absolutely horrible. And I've just had the belt break on the straw shredder as well, which is again, really annoying because we just rang up to get a replacement and they haven't got any and they're on back order. So when that's gonna happen, I do not know. High of the week, however, is that we finally got all of the cows out. So all the cows, calves, those that need to calve, um, everything is out. So we've just got young stock in, we've got the bulls in over there and we've got a few cool cows still in the yard. But other than that, everything else is out. So it feels like winter 21, 22, completed it, mate. This video is actually the first step in preparation for next year's carving. So go get yourself a cup of tea, sit down, relax, and I hope you enjoy it. Today is a massive day because it is semen testing day. Not for me, but for these guys. Now, before we go any further, I'm gonna apologize for the fact I sound like Louis Armstrong, but don't worry, I'm not gonna break into a rendition of what a wonderful day. I'm just incredibly ill right now. But as normal with us farmers, we just gotta plow on. We're gonna semen test all four of our stock balls today. And the reason why we wanna do that is because we wanna make sure they're firing on all cylinders for when they go out, which is in about six to seven weeks time. Um, last year, when we semen tested them, we found that they had a bit of an illness and their semen was slightly down on uh, on their like levels. So we had to treat them and then put them out, which is why we kind of do them a little bit early. We would normally do them sort of beginning of May time. Um, we want to just get them done a little bit earlier just in case we find anything again so that we can treat them and make sure that they're like fully recovered before they go in. Now, we semen test our balls every single year because I think it's really important to make sure that they are working before we put them out. Um, just because we see them and test them and they pass doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to definitely work because they could go lame or there could be some reason why they're not serving the cow other than the fact that their semen's not working. Um, but if we make sure that their semen is working, we can see whether a cow's gone lame and we can see whether it's not jumping for whatever reason. We can't see if their semen's not working when they're out in the field. So that kind of covers the base that we have no control of otherwise. Um, and also gives us a bit of time if any of these guys do happen to be infertile. It gives us time to find the replacement bull. If you've never seen our bulls before, uh, I'll give you a, a run through. This one is Hornblower. Hornblower is our oldest bull. I don't even know how old he is. How old are you? Old, he said. Um, very old. He is like the king. This guy has got out so many messes. He has calves like they were going out of fashion. We worked out in like the last six years out of our cows, he's had like over 50%, was it 50%, 46% of all the calves or something ridiculous, loads. He's a machine, you're a, you're a boy, you're a good boy. Next to him is Lewis. Lewis is, he's a bit of an, he's a bit of an idiot. Like he's a great bull, he's an amazing bull, put him on the heifers, but he's just really difficult to work with. He's a right stroppy little bugger. Uh, we have 007 here, 007 is a little bit smaller, again, really nice bull, um, very good all rounder. And then we've got, on the end, we've got Paul. Paul is our newest bull. We bought him, um, was he last year? <laughs> no, he's last year. He was last year. Um, Paul is a great bull. You can see he's a little bit smaller. Really good figures on his EBVs. Really like Paul. Um, he's done as well. So they're the boys. What we will do is we'll have to run these guys up to the cattle crush, put them in the pens behind, and then we'll bring them through one at a time. We've got Francesco coming. Francesco is our vet who does the semen testing. Now, we used to have uh, one of the older vets called Wendy. She's now retired. Francesco's coming to do it this year. Um, he's Italian. And I forget him talking on the video. I apologize if you can't understand him because he talks so quickly, um, especially if he's just been back to Italy and he's got a really strong Italian accent. I can understand him. Dad struggles sometimes, but he's great. He's absolutely hilarious. So this could be quite funny.
Firstly, we have a thorough health examination of the animal, checking its feet and testicles and make sure there's no deformities. They then have a rectal examination where we feel the prostate and the seminal ventricles to make sure that there is no problems there either and it is completely safe in order to do the test. The probe is then inserted into the anus and that puts an electrical current down through the seminal ventricles to stimulate the bull into giving us a sample. Once it is inserted, there is a cable attached to it to allow that electrical current to come from the control box down on the floor. Someone then has to hold the probe into the anus um, whilst the vet then applies the current. The current is gradually increased um, in small increments over time so that it doesn't cause any damage to the bull. The sample is then taken into a pre-warmed tube in order for the sperm to keep alive as long as possible. Once the semen is collected, it is then taken and looked at under a microscope where we can tell whether the sperm is acting as expected. It is then inked and watered down in order to be able to count the sperm and to check whether there is any with detached heads or any other deformities that might hinder its performance. Firstly, I should apologize because I didn't get Francesco to talk because I didn't realize he was bringing a vet student with him and also another vet to sort of uh, learn the ropes on how to start semen testing. So we didn't get a chance to talk to him on video. And also I forgot how much of a potty mouth he is. Now I don't mind swearing and I swear a fair bit myself, but I'm trying to keep YouTube as clean as possible because um, I'm thinking kids might be watching and whatever else. And it's probably, uh, I don't want their parents on my back for swearing. However, I will share with you my favorite Francesco quote from yesterday. Um, when we tested Lewis here, Lewis sneezed on him because they do like a the full examination and he opened the front door and he sneezed on him and then he went around the back end and he defecated on him and he went he went first you sneeze on my face then you sh on my face what next do not answer that question so we tested all the balls and they all tested and passed really well apart from hornblower at this end. Hornblower didn't give us a good enough sample to be able to actually test, so we're gonna to have to retest him uh, in about three or four weeks time. Um, but it has got me thinking, what we did find with Hornblower was on his examination, that his one of his testicles had a lump on it, and um, the vet didn't think it was a tumor or anything like that. But what he did say is, because Hornblower is quite old, that sometimes the sort of um, sperm tissue uh, the tissue that's used to create the sperm as they get older becomes like fibrous tissue it kind of and doesn't produce any sperm anymore and he thinks that's what that lump was so he thinks it's sort of age related and that could be part of the reason why he didn't give a good sample as well so i'd be devastated if we had to get rid of hornblower he's been an absolute rock for us um but that is sort of the way that this game unfortunately works we will retest him and see how we go but that's left me with a little bit of dilemma because we were planning on, as if you watch these videos for a while, we were planning on um, buying our stabilizers that we bought earlier in the year, carving them, which we have, and if we got on really well with them and we like them, which we do, then we would sell out our blue heifers and buy some more stabilizers in, and in that case, then probably buy a stabilizer bull to put on them to start and breed our own replacements, and they would have gone on the stabilizer heifers that we bought in and the ones that we bought last year. So given a sort of a group of around 40 odd, um, to bull with the one bull and then run that stabilizer as part of our rotation with these guys. However, all these bulls work, apart from potentially Hornblower, but I also can't sell my blues out because we're under TB restriction. So I don't really know what to do. Um, I thought about AIing, but there's a lot of work involved in AIing for us um, because we're spring carving. I find AIing, especially as the suckler head, works really well when you're autumn carving because you've got the cows around the yard and it works uh, when you want to serve them because you'll be served them by now um but yeah i'm a bit of a dilemma what would you do i'd be interested to know like um i'm just really unsure really unsure of to where to go from here uh bull wise so um it'd be interesting and that is it for another video guys thank you very much for watching if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe i would really appreciate it i'm going to crack on feeding these guys by hand because we can't get a belt for the shredder so it looks like i've got a very busy easter weekend with that being said have a great one have a great easter it's going to be a glorious weekend from all accounts what the weather guys have been saying um get outside enjoy the fresh air and i'll see you all next week bye